Chapter 6 Lucid Dreams Kino went to sleep that night, feeling all sorts of emotions. Sadness, pain, failure were among some of the emotional stages he went through that night. After that day, his dreams started to become more and more vivid. Kino started to dream unexplainable things almost every night. His dreams always began with him in a wooden room where he found himself lying face down on the floor. In this room, there was an evil female creature sitting down on a throne, staring at him. The throne was made up of wooden spikes and skulls, and snakes covered it. The creature appeared to be the same one he had seen before in his dream, where it was after some birds. The creature was a shapeshifter, each time appearing in a different form. Its main form was a half-human, half-snake female creature. In these dreams, Kino would be lying on the floor, and the serpent-like female would just stare at him and let out an evil laugh. The room Kino was in had several doors. Every night, Kino would dream he would choose to take a different door. Every door led him to a different path. Every path revealed something different. Every path he took, at the end, led right back to the cold, wooden room. There he laid face down with the evil one on the throne, laughing at him. Days had passed since the tryouts and the games were getting closer. One day, while Kino and Uncle Suzu were sitting outside their home, Kino started to share one of his dreams. Uncle Suzu, Kino got his uncle's attention. Yes, my son, Uncle Suzu replied. Have you ever had a dream where it felt like you were actually there? Kino asked his Uncle Suzu. Many times, my son, many times. Uncle Suzu said it in an amused tone. What did you dream, my son? Remember that day of the tryouts when you were trying to wake me up and I woke up screaming? Asked Kino. Yes, yes, I do. Uncle Suzu answered, Well, ever since that day, it seems my dreams have been more vivid. It feels like my dreams are very lifelike, and it's hard to distinguish from reality. Not only that, but I seem to remember everything that goes on in my dreams once I wake up. Just the other night, I had a dream in which I opened a wooden door that led me down a pathway. At the end of this path, was a wooden trunk. As I made it toward the trunk, I noticed I wasn't the only one there. I was leading a group of young felines down this path toward the trunk as well. As we made it to the wooden trunk, I reached down to open it and everything turned black. Evil sounds, screaming voices, and the voice of a female echoed through my mind. Then suddenly, I found myself free falling down a black hole. I abruptly came to a stop and ended up in the room where my dream began. There I laid face down, lying on the floor. Sitting down across the room was a female creature, sitting on a wooden throne with snakes, wooden spikes, and skulls all over it. Kino's blood was pumping as he recounted his dream. Why am I having these dreams? What do you think they mean? Kino asked his uncle. My son... The gods speak to us in many ways. It is said that when we dream, teachers from ancient worlds and different realms communicate with us. You, my son, have a gift. The gods have blessed you with vision. These dreams you are having are not dreams but visions. It is now up to you to distinguish between the dream and the vision. Uncle Suzu said to Kino, But how would I know if it's a vision or a dream? Kino asked. The difference between a vision and a dream is its clarity, for the vision is a set for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak but not lie. It may delay, but wait for it, because it will surely come to fruition. However, you have a responsibility, a part to play. You can't rely on just a vision to come. You must get up and move with that vision that the gods have shown you. You must not doubt. You must act. 
Uncle Suzu answered wisely. But what am I supposed to do? I didn't make the team. Everyone is laughing at me and calling me a failure. I have failed my mother and father, Kino said in a wistful voice. The real battleground is in our mind. You will never be defeated for what they say about you. You will be defeated for what you believe is true about you. That's what threatens your destiny. What I'm trying to tell you, son, is that it's not the movement of the clock that produces new life. It is a movement in your mind that creates it. Uncle Suzu provided Kino with more wisdom 